Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an A330 pilot and in this video featuring the Phoenix A320 V2 currently version 214 we are going to fly it from Athens in um, Greece over to Santorini where we are going to fly an approach to runway 15 and if the winds permit we are going to do uh, a circling approach for runway 33. So, this is going to be just about a 30 minute flight, and in this flight we are going to have a look into all the new changes that we have seen with the recent Phoenix update by checking out a complete flight to see how the airplane is going to behave. So, very quick update here on the stuff that was actually in the change log. Here we go. So, the important stuff that we see in here down in the system, so I see a little bit of stuff on go arounds, like up here or um, a little bit further down here. So we might do a go around as well to see how things are going to work and a little bit of stuff on the FMS as well. So let's see how that is going to behave. Finally, we're going to play around a little bit more with the behavior of the airplane on landing and on the flat to see if we can get that any closer to where we would like it to be. All right, so in regards to the flare, I'm sure many of you have seen yesterday's video. If you haven't, then in there I shed a little bit of light into what is actually going on in the background. And I will just about bring it up over here as well regarding the flare mode that Phoenix have confirmed that the logic in itself is correct right now. However, if you approach with a very low pitch, then it is going to give you a very shallow input. So that's going to become important again later on when we fly the approach, as it basically means when you use flaps 3, which currently has insufficient pitch on the approach, then you are going to get a very, very weak flare command from the airplane. On the other hand side, if we use flaps full, we get a little bit higher pitch, and we might play around with that a little bit to see what we can come up with. All right, so that is pretty much it for the preparation. Let's head straight into the um, cockpit of our A320. And we're actually going to start off in the cabin because I just wanted to quickly thank the repainter who created this repaint. That's a great cabin paint over here and it just looks really good. Okay then, with all of that said, let's go straight into the cockpit and take a seat. Since we do hope to be flying the circling approach today, I'm going to fly from the first officer's seat since we'll have much better visibility to the runway from the FL seat since it is a right hand circling. Right then, let's go ahead with our preparation. I'm not going to comment too much. I'll simply run through the procedure so that we get the airplane flying. Okay. So we've got power. Fire detection does work, and then we've got the lights. We can just about turn them off today. Like so. Okay then, it is fairly hot over here in Greece. It is summer after all, August, late August. So I'm going to start the APU straight away. Okay, cool. Then, let's have a very quick look into our flight plan. I've imported it already, Athens to Greece, should be departing right now. We are running a tiny bit late, but Europe in late summer, that is just realistic. Okay, so let's have a very quick look into the flight plan. I planned our ultimate to be Athens, and since we are looking at a potential go-around on the arrival today to check the new go-around features, I suppose we're going to take just about a little bit of extra fuel. So, first of all, weather in Santorini is currently rather good slight headwind component runway 33 and overall we can see the wind is forecast to be somewhere around variable five knots okay alternates all of them looking good athens looking good as well so that is about that cool then if we have a quick look into the fuel figures we're planned with 4.5 tons I suggest we take a little bit more. Let's make 5.2 so that we got fuel for the planned go around as well. So going into the Mars and Balance, we're fully booked today and we'll take a tap more fuel. Here we go, 5.2. All right, looks good. Load aircraft, yes please. And then we can start with our setups as well. Okay, cool. So. We've got oxygen pressure, we've got hydraulic pressure, and we've got engine oil. 
flap lever does agree, speed brake retracted, and then the chocks are in place, so we can quickly check the alt mode brakes. Looks good. Okay, cool. So, let's initialize the uh, ACARs, and then we can start with our pre-flight procedures. How's the fuel looking? So refueling, but it's gonna be finished in a few moments. Okay then. So batteries are charging, very nice. So, what's the recent Q&H? Let's have a very quick look. Athens, Meta, 1012. Okay, perfect. So, 1012, that stuff is all in. The date is correct. Okay then, let's move on further. Gain calibrated and multi-scan is on. Ground clutter suppression on. But the rest of the weather radar remains off, of course. And it's going to be us flying on the right-hand seat today. And then... Let's see, aircraft status, 32200 CFM engines with current NAV database. NAV accuracy downgraded, that's expected. GPS primary lost, aircraft position invalid as well. So let's go ahead and request those. And we'll be the Aegean 5 Charlie today. So not a whole lot of custom necks here, 20 and cruising at flight level 190. We can uplink the winds as well. Then let's turn to the flight plan, departing off 3 right on the KR to Juliet departure. Normally you'd fly the tangos, but I figured today we'd have a little bit more fun and do that. Okay, VOR approach Roman 15 and we'll take the transition of Corax, if I'm not totally mistaken. Let's very quickly check that on the flight plan. No, Paxon it is. And interesting, we don't have that in here. If I remember the pre-flight preparation correctly, to be fair, I did it on Lido charts, not on Jepassen, and we've got a Jepassen database in here. So chances are we might have a little difference there in what I planned initially. So let's see, VOR runway 15. And it should be that from Paxon. Interesting. Maybe if we take it from Natus. But as you can see, Paxon is on here as initial approach fix. And that is VOR 15. No, oh, interesting, that's missing. Okay. Well, that is interesting. But in that case, we can still do things a bit different. We take the Korax transition and then we should have a star leading there as well so let's very quickly check that Paxon on Charlie I believe it is yeah Paxon on Charlie towards Korax and then from Korax we can fly the approach that should work as well interesting it doesn't let me go back normally it would do that at least on the A330 but then we quickly go over here again Okay, so packs and on Charlie towards Korax, and then the Korax transition, and that should be just about fine. Yep, it is. We can get rid of the holding already, as I know that we are not going to fly that. What's that? Didn't I? Okay, clear. That's the hold down there. Hey, oh, look at that! It <laughs> deletes the waypoint above. Okay, well then we are just going to use the immediate exit. Well, interesting, not exactly what I would expect the airplane to do, but that is fine as well. 
we aren't gonna crash because of that. Okay then, secondary flight plan, copy active. And then we are departing Athens and runway is gonna be 03, right? It's actually just on the runway track. So that's gonna be Athens X2. Okay, let's see what that course is going to be. 032. Like so, store. Still doesn't insert, insert that. That's a pity, hopefully they're going to fix that soon. Okay, at immediate return to Athens. For an ILS Yankee 03, right, perfect. And we'll also put an extended center line on here. And once again, put the engine out point on here. Perfect. Okay then, with that our route is done, so let's go ahead and store it. And then we can do some performance. Let's see if we've got a load sheet already. Probably should. No, no received messages. Okay, well, in that case, we are simply going to use the uh, flight plan for that. So we've got zero fuel weight, 62.5. And if we don't know the CG, we are simply going to enter 25. Okay, so fueling is done and the APU is running for a bit. Bleed on. So 5.2 tons of fuel and then we can go ahead and do a quick takeoff calculation. So synchronize load sheet, synchronize weather, runway is going to be 3 right. Let's see if we've got some intersections. Yes, we do. Well, I suppose we simply calculate with Delta 5 and we get the most um, conservative calculation. Okay, so we've got flaps 1, down point 4, 60 degrees flex temperature. Let's go with that. 1 slash 0 0.4 down and 60 degrees. And with that, our takeoff speeds are going to be 142, 146, 146. Alright, finally our elevation is somewhere in the region about 200 if I'm not mistaken. It is, so NADP2 is going to be 1280 slash 1280. 1771 engine out is correct, we don't need to pre-select any speed as we've got a restriction on air anyway. And that's about all we need. Okay, cool. So with that our box is set up. Let's quickly do a little bit of um, radio setup as well. 121.5, 122.8. And then we can start with our departure briefing. Okay, cool. So, let's go for it then. Um, Athens from my 03 right, KR2 Juliet departure. Initial climb is going to be, uh, I believe, uh, 6,000, and finally, for the uh, MSA, we are running in the region of approximately um, 3,000 over the water, but there is a little bit of terrain down there as well. Let's get that chart real quick. So, Kia to Juliet, where is that chart? Here it is. So they say 7,000 on the chart over here, but I tell you honestly, um, we'll stay over the water. We'll probably make a right hand circuit anyway. So in the south down there, 3,500. So let's take 4,000. Okay, cool. Then, um, extra fuel and time. We've got plenty of extra fuel. Two tons, which is one hour time. 
Even though it didn't calculate the alternate fuel there yet, but we'll get to that. Normally it should once the uh, IRSs are aligned, but it's fine. Okay, cool. So, hotspots for the plant taxi. I don't really have any um, stop margin for the rejected takeoff. Unfortunately, the uh, Phoenix doesn't calculate that yet. It'd be really nice, though, if it did, but can't find that anywhere on here. Okay, so, anyway, we've got uh, 2,500 meters wrongly calculated, so stop margin is anywhere in the region of about... Um, make that 1,000 meters or so. Engine out sit. Yeah, straight out onto the water and then we can make a right turn out and finally immediate return is possible we're under the max landing weight and i don't have any special operations today any questions no okay perfect then we can go ahead and do the cockpit preparation checklist gear pits and covers removed fuel quantity 5180 kilogram balanced seat belts on adiers nav barrel rev that's why we do it uh, QNH 1012. Cockpit preparation checklist complete. Okay then, GSX, show me what you got. So, in the meantime... While GSX is getting ready, we can prepare the airplane as well. So, they removed the uh, stairs already, very good. Parking brake is set, and the APU is running. Okay, cool. So, ground cockpit. Uh, please prepare the airplane for pushback. Confirm all doors and hatches are closed. Ground equipment removed and bypass pin is installed. Well, thank you for that. Um, let's see if we can grab a load sheet real quick. Because I just want to be sure in the center of gravity. Otherwise, I'm sure people are going to be like, so why are you commenting on uh, stuff that you didn't trim out correctly? Okay, resend that load sheet, please. Here we go, load sheet. Compliance with edition number one, zero fuel weight 62.5, and the zero fuel CG is 31.4. Five point two tons, takeoff weight sixty seven point five, and we've got sixty seven point five hundred eighty passengers plus one. We can accept that. Okay, nose to the left, please. Okay, so this one is in, in compliance with edition number one. That means we don't have to re um, do our takeoff performance, and that means so. That's the anti-collision light on, door can be closed, and then we can do the before start checklist. Park and brake, set, takeoff speeds and thrust, 1 for 2, 1 for 6, 1 for 6, flex 60, windows closed, beacon on, before start checklist complete. Right, brake released. Roger. So, surely it doesn't hurt to get some VORs into display as well. And then how about we start just now. So, to get you a little bit into view, we are parking over here on uh, Bravo 37, push back onto the um, Kilo Taxiway and then straight out via Delta 8 into Delta. And we took Delta 5 figures, that means we don't even have to taxi too far, but probably going to go a little bit further, Delta 4, something the likes. In any case, that is the plan. Right, we are beyond the road, taxiway is coming up over there, then we can go ahead with our engine start. We'll select the recognition, wait until you actually see indications up there that indicate the FedEx is powered, and then we can go ahead and engine 2 start.
Okay, the avail light comes up really late in the Fenix, so let's go ahead and start engine one. Engine one start. Break set. See that? The avail light still isn't there. Hopefully that's going to be fixed with the new engine model. There we go. Takes like 20 seconds or so from the moment where most of the parameters are actually stable compared to when the light comes on. Not sure if there's any background to it. I could well imagine that it is related to the indications and the actual flight simulator internal engine maybe not being in sync. Maybe they show us the correct engine start indications while the actual FS internal engine is different and only when the internal engine is started it shows the veil or something the like. That's pure speculation. But um, based upon my experience testing for this sim, that could very well be. Okay, so we've got two good starts. Yeah, clear to disconnect, clear signal on the right hand side with a pin and have a good day down there. So trim should be down point four like this. Okay, thanks. Clear disconnect, clear single right inside, please. Yes, I know that. Why does GSX always take so long? I don't get it. Okay, well, she's carrying a pin, that is all I need to know. Okay, after start checklist. Anti ice, off ecom status, checked, pitch trim, 30% set, rudder trim, neutral, after start checklist complete. Flag control check, full up, full down, neutral, full left, full right, neutral, rudder, full left. Full right, neutral. Okay. Taxi. Right side clear. Left side clear. Tiny bit of delay, but we are getting there. Okay, brake check. Pressure zero. Okay, so second taxiway away to the right. This is the first one up here. We'll take the next one. So this is Charlie. We're looking for Delta. And here it comes, Delta. Clear left side, clear right side. Okay, so let's think about the takeoff briefing. Has anything changed ever since we did it? Not really. No. Conditions are unchanged, then we can go ahead with the taxi procedures. Still awaiting the cabin. So, standing by for the cabin. So this is probably Delta 5 already. Yeah, halfway down the terminal, this is Delta 5. The one that we originally calculated, but no sense to take an intersection if we aren't ready for departure. Otherwise, we are just wasting runway behind us. This is Delta 4 then. Yep, 
You see that little entry not allowed sign over there? Those are actually quite interesting in Athens. I had it a few times already that ATC requested us to use an intersection where there was a no entry sign in front of it. And then we stopped in front of the sign and asked them like, hey, are you sure you want us to go there? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we didn't demolish those signs for the past 20 years. You can just go in there. That's just lovely. It's just really lovely. Alright, Kevin, what are you guys doing? Let's help him a little bit. Maybe we can make them expedite a bit. Because they are certainly taking their time back there. Alright, now they are ready. Taxi checklist. Flight controls, checked, flap setting, config, 1 plus F, radar and predictive wind shear, on and auto, engine start selector, norm, ECA memo, take off no blue, taxi checklist complete. Okay, approach is clear, then let's go ahead and line it up. Cabin crew, prepare for departure. Lineup checklist. We did calculate packs off, did we? Take off runway. At 03 right, full length. TCAS. Tara, packs 1 and 2, off. Lineup checklist complete. I wonder if those approach lights over there are this big in real life as well. It does look rather easy to clip your wing on there, doesn't it? Okay, take off. Manflex 60, SS Romeo, auto thrust blue. Thrust set. One hundred knots checked. V one rotate. Nav checked. Positive climb. Gear up. interesting looks of the departure here, taking us right over that mountain. But that is fine. Okay, thrust climb, climb, auto thrust. And pack two coming on. Yep, straight over the hill. Interesting. And pack one on. Alright, so let's see how the alt constraint mode is going to work because there was a bit of um, change done to that. Flap zero. Speed checked. Flap zero. Okay, so let's put the autopilot on, AP2, and see how that is going to fly the level off over here. 
as that was part of the uh, change log. Normally in the descent they said, but if they change something like that in the descent, it's always a good idea to check and climb as well. Speed old star. Well, that looks like a decent level off. I'll just keep the airplane uh, flying like that. It's going to be five miles until we can continue the climb, so that's going to be just about in front of the shore over there. All constraints, climb blue. So I'll just about monitor what it's about to do now. In the meantime, if we quickly go to the outside. Graphics are just phenomenal, aren't they? Okay, so, uh, about to start our turn. This is interesting, by the way. Why is it doing a little turn just in front over here? Let's have a, another quick look at the departure. Okay. So be it. I probably wanted to intercept this um, radial 264 in Mount Tukaristos over here. But interesting that it took so long for that. Okay, thrust climb climb, all 6000 magenta. So this time we're not going to delay the continuous climb, this time we'll just go straight up to cruise level. What is that? I want to delete the 6000. Clear? Why does that not work? On the 330 you can delete that without any problem. That's interesting, there was something in the change log regarding deletion of uh, constraints, but... Thrust climb, climb. That's interesting, let's uh, quickly have a look into that as well. So, um... What do they have over here? Fixed speed altitude constraints, missing criteria, well that can't be it. Corrected restricting speed constraints below econ on descent, corrected not restricting speed constraints above econ on descent. Do we have anything else? High altitude constraints should appear in mock and be satisfied or ignored as such. Unrestricted speed constraints are ignored. Okay. Doesn't look like... Well, added plus minus is not allowed with speed constraint. Okay, but that is strange. Um, normally it should be possible to delete a constraint like that. Okay, set standard. Standard cross-check passing flight level 96. Now. Checked. Well, that was interesting behavior there. Um, certainly not what I would have expected the plane to do, but so be it. Okay then, passing 10,000. We'll release passengers for a short moment for the flight. Okay, nothing on the rat nav. Active to secondary. Optimum 350, I doubt it. At least not for what we plan today. Okay. Perfect, so that's it. So, we are out of Athens, and I am going to start the approach preparation real quick. Let's go ahead and request some weather. Let's see if the weather is good enough for the circling approach. So, LGSR, and I'm looking for a meta, please. Request. Here we go, latest weather, 360 at 10, Carvok 31, 1010. Okay, that's quite all right. 1010. 
Okay, cool. So we can do the circling. Then it's going to be VOR approach runway 15, circle the land onto runway um, 33 today. So let me quickly go ahead with the setup. Arrival, we'll take 33. Oh, what's the cabin altitude doing there? That's interesting. That's certainly not supposed to happen with the outflow valve almost closed. Well, let's click that away for now. Okay, cool. So, that is that. And then, a flight plan for the arrival should be looking good the way it is, but let's quickly grab a couple charts. So, ground charts. We'll take that one. I don't believe they have any specific parkings. No, they don't. Okay then, Paxson on Charlie for a VOR approach from a 15. Perfect. Approaching. Okay, nothing on the right now. Santorini, well, we'll actually take Rome 33. Yes, that is going to be our landing Rome. Regarding the weather, 1010. And the rest of it I'll just need again. Thirty one and three six zero at ten. Okay, like so. I've got almost a thousand to go. Speed, vertical speed. Okay, cool. So, circling minima is a thousand two hundred. Cool, we're going to do a flap full landing because we want um, to be sure that we actually get the approach pitch. And then I would say, let's do a very quick landing calculation. I mean, we can't do anything more than flaps full, but let's see on the auto brake. So, runway 33, braking, uh, runway is dry, let's get the latest weather in here. So, landing rate, what do we have? EFOP 3.7, that means we're going to burn 400 kilograms. Landing weight 66.2. 66.2. So reverse on, flaps full, manual landing. That's interesting, it's telling me we can't even land on the wrong way. I kind of doubt it though. Well then we've got to use max manual. However, nonetheless, I'm still going to arm auto brakes medium old star. Because I'm fairly sure this is going to work just fine. Alright, cool, then. Speed old cruise. Let's go ahead with the approach briefing then. MSA for the arrival, 3,500. Paxan 1 Charlie arrival for VOR approach runway 15. Circle to land runway 33, minimum 1,200. Go around trajectory. Well, from the VOR, we are going to go around uh, to left as soon as practical to track 315. Intercept and follow radial 360 Sierra November India. At 14 DME, turn left, intercept, follow radial, 335 Sierra November India, in Mount Korax, enter the holding pattern, climb 3500. So it's basically an immediate left hand turn onto the radial outbound, and that's going to make our life easier when we do the um, circle to land later on and go around from that. Okay, cool. So, need to keep in mind though, we don't have any guidance for the missed approach in there, so. Let's quickly program Sierra November India on the radial. Then initially we need 360 outbound. 
Okay, so 360 and then follow the radial 335 inbound, so that's going to be a course of 155. Okay, cool. So with that, our setup is done. And then I would say we can continue the briefing. Okay, so extra fuel and time. We have an hour 21, 2.7 tons. Guidance for the approach. We are initially going to use the approach mode. And then at 100 feet above the uh, minimums, we're going to push to level off. And then use... Uh, the bird to vector us around onto the circling approach landing flaps full stop margin is uh, plenty unfortunately not calculated okay. actually does it give us a stop margin i don't think i saw one no it doesn't but we somewhat get the data over here so <coughs> that's like 250 meters roughly Okay, reverser will be used, auto brakes, medium will be used, planned runway exit, we'll probably have to backtrack it in order to get to an exit, or is there one at the end? I don't believe there is. Actually, there kinda is. Yeah, as long as we don't go into the turn pad, we can vacate via Bravo. Okay, hotspots for taxi in, I don't see any, and special operations. Yeah, we're flying the circle to land approach today, so in case of a go-around, we are not going to have any FMS guidance. What we're going to do is to run the um, approach based on the outbound courses, or the missed approach based on the uh, courses in the Ratnav page, and I am going to fly that thing probably with um, open climb and heading modes. Okay, that should be about it. Um, any questions on that? No? Very good. Okay, speed is going back to 50. Why is it doing that? Did I miss any constraints or anything? Manage speed to 50. Why? The descent it says 276 again, and it used to be like 300. I've got no way. Okay, now it's going back up. What's it doing now? Still in cruise phase, managed 311 again. Well, that was interesting. Definitely not supposed to do that, but I'm going to file a report about it and uh, we'll see. Right, let's initiate the descent, and interestingly enough, the speed target is going back down. I've got no idea why. I really got no idea why. Why does it tell me manage oh, 250 in blue? That doesn't make sense. It was 276. Let's put that. Something is wrong here. So we've got a blue indication there. Manage 250. But if I type something in, let's say 300 knots. So blue means changeable by the pilot, but I can't change anything there. What happens if we go select it? Let's take 274, that was what uh, Vinav has calculated earlier. So let's see how that's going to behave. I didn't miss any constraints, did I? Speed? Let's recheck the chart once more, but I'm pretty sure I didn't miss anything. No, we aren't even on the star, so there's no reason why it should reduce the speed to 250. There certainly isn't. Okay, well, I got no idea why it's doing what it's doing, but, um, well. By the way, I'll dim the displays a little bit. They do seem rather bright to me. Okay, something like that. Okay. So, that should be about it. Passing level 150, seatbelt's going on.
And then let's take it down to the platform. Set QNH 1010. 1010 cross check passing 13,800 now. Speed. first idle. It's kind of interesting behavior here of the airplane. It seems to me like I can't really decide if it wants to follow the um, VDEF or if it wants to go first idle. So let's watch that once again. So we are now on the selected target. Let's see, it still says manage target is 250. I don't know why, but that's what it does. Okay, so let's increase that target speed a bit. And I'm going to do a little experiment here, since the change log says they made the way the airplane intercepts an old star out of descent mode better, so Let's give that a try. Let's take something here like 3200. Okay, that might have been a bit early. That was unfair. Let's try... Okay, no, I messed that up. Let's uh, give it 9000. So, speed descent. I messed it over there. I hoped I could get the altitude above 10,000, but didn't really want to work. Because I wanted to avoid it trying to reduce the speed at first. So this one I messed over a little bit, but let's use a little bit of speed brake to get that corrected. Okay, passing 10,000. Okay, speed is coming back. Speed brakes retracted. So, speed alt star. And the level off definitely looks alright. Cool. Then we can continue the descent. Thrust idle descent, alt 3500 magenta. I'll help it a little bit since I added a bit of energy into the system. Well, let's bring it back down onto the VNAV path. More drag. Yep, you've got that already. Your speed brake is out, my friend. Indication still is correct, though. It is going to say it until you cancel it. Okay, so let's, let's exit that holding. Okay, speed brake going back in. Let's quickly read the approach checklist as well, while we still have time for it. So, Barrow QNH 1010, seatbelts on, minimum. That's Barrow 1200, auto brake, medium, engine start selector, norm. Approach checklist complete. Okay. Speed, final approach, flaps one. Speed check, flaps one. So I'm just about going to help it a little bit here. So there's our airport right in front of us.
Alright, so normally we'd fly an approach like this with uh, flap 3 landing gear down, spoilers armed initially, but um, yeah, you know what, uh, we'll do that, Albert Corax, we'll get the airplane configured, so let's go gear down already to help the speed come to back. Flaps 2. Speed check. Flaps 2. Okay, so. Go around altitude 3500 set. Flaps 3. Speed check. Flaps 3. So let's quickly get another weather update just to be on the safe side here. Weather data zero one zero at ten thirty one one zero one zero. So zero one zero at ten. And I will quickly enter that over here as well. Why is it showing me the secondary takeoff? It shouldn't. 1010 zero, one, zero, and 31. Okay, perfect. Cool, then let's try to get at least one distance altitude check in there. 7 miles out, 2300. And we are now about seven miles out. Did it say 2,300? Yeah. Wow, so we're going in 300 feet high. Good job. Okay, let's see. Six miles, 1,950. So, six miles, 300 feet high. No comment. Anyway, since we're flying a circling approach, that's not going to be too much of a problem. All it means is that we are going to reach the um, point where we initiate the circling, where we level off at the NDA a mile later, because the plane is bringing us in too high. Actually, I wonder if that's going to work out with a missed approach point up there. Because this one has a 1,040 foot limitation if we want to level off at 1,200. I'm a little bit afraid the system might bring us in, um, or might automatically go into a missed approach. You can see how we are coming in much too high for the approach itself there, but that is okay since we don't intend to actually fly the approach. So we can pre-select the track of 110. Like that. Checked. Okay, push to level off. And then left turn outbound. We might be a little bit too close to the field right now because the um, plane just brought us in too high. But let's see how that's going to work out. So, we are about wings level, timing. Looking for 30 seconds. And then things are going to go quick once we turn downwind. So we are 1,100 feet roughly above the uh, field. That means 33 seconds. The wind is negligible over here. Okay, 30 seconds. Turn them back, downwind. Yeah, continue. 
Okay, so runway course is actually 334. That means 154 is our course. And then we are going a beam already. That's what happens when you are that bit too close there. Okay, so 33 seconds. In the meantime, secondary flight plan, activate. And you can give me a direct to the center fix, please. Thank you. Okay, so 33 seconds, three, two, one, here we go. Turn right heading three, three, four. Here we go. Okay, flux full, speed checked, flux full. Landing checklist. Ica memo. Landing no blue. Landing checklist complete. Okay, so looks good to me. Then autopilot off. Let's initiate the descent. And make sure we don't overshoot too much. Flight directors off. Okay, that looks fairly good. Just missing a little bit of the wind that was forecast. But anyway, we are going to fly this first one into a go around, so that's not too much of an issue. Very hard to actually read the puppies. But I believe I'm on three whites right now. Okay, go around flaps. Mantoga, SRS go around track, auto thrust blue. Positive climb, gear up. Okay, autopilot. Heading. So let's turn right, 360. Open climb. Thrust climb, auto thrust. Flaps one, speed check, flaps one. Why is it not following the flight director? Ah, very slowly. It's all right, it's accelerating. So, let's have another quick look into the approach chart. And that's exactly what I want to see. Okay, so, we continue until 14 DME, then we do a left-hand turn. Flap zero. Let's also help get the plane exactly on the radial. Hello there, track. Now it's reacting, okay. That was interesting. Alt star. Alt. Okay then, let's quickly put the approach back into the FMS. So, the VOR brought us in a little bit high. Let's see if we can do an RNAV instead then. Maybe that is better. Okay, like so. Direct 2, triple 4, radial in, insert. Starting in 3000, that's alright. Okay, cool. 
So the wind on the ground was almost non-existent. For me, that is reason enough just to, you know, um, do a straight in approach onto the opposite runway this time. Okay, so let's quickly grab that Arnoff approach chart. Here it is, RMP15. Okay, minimum 1490. Alright, perfect. Config full for the landing. We are going to have a little bit of a tailwind there, like 5 knots or so. And we are on the radio now. So to 14 miles, then we do the left turn to come back inbound. Okay, so quick check from triple four mandatory three thousand three degree glide down to the minimum, and that is exactly what we have. Perfect. Okay, cool. So let's see how this one is going to work out. Maybe the plane brings us in a little bit better this time. And why is the cabin pressure page open? I don't know. I just don't know. Okay. In any case, that is fine for me. Cool. Then let's do the approach checklist again. Barrel ref, QNH 1010, seatbelts on minimum, barrel 1490, auto brake, medium, engine start selector, norm, approach checklist complete. Okay then, let's turn left onto the profile and then we're going to start the approach. Descending 3000. Vertical speed heading. I don't think we really need to do a rebriefing. I mean, we're all visual anyway. Chances are I might actually just... Um, go into a visual in case it's bringing us in high again, but we'll see about that. We'll just let it fly in mount and then we are going to decide. Okay, let's do heading 240 for a moment. Here we go. Old star. Okay, so over there is our island. We are staying clear of this one, even though we are a little bit close. That might get a little noise complaint there. Let's take another 20 or 30 degrees to the left. Alt. Ultimately, we need two miles prior to triple four to um, fly the Arnav approach. So I do believe at heading 210, we still get those. Yep, that looks good. If we go straight, like here, we even have three miles. We can go left another 10 degrees to fly the approach. Okay, enough blue. And final approach, not blue. So let's see how that is going to work out this time. And how the profile is going to behave. I'll just grab the weather another time, just because I want to be absolutely sure that we got the correct Q&H. Not that I'm blaming the airplane for anything that it is um, not guilty of. Weather data, okay. 23rd 1120 Zulu. Yes, that is now. 010 10 31 1010. Okay. Okay, approach enough. Flaps 1. Speed check, flaps one. Okay, so let's give it another try. Approaching triple four. Yep, the brick is coming alive. It's 
speed, final approach. Let's quickly check the missed approach altitude on this one. 3,500. Okay, go around altitude 3,500 set. Okay, so let's try to fly a normal approach profile with this. We got a tiny bit of a tailwind, so we'll take that into account. I might, I might start configuring the airplane just 100 or 200 feet earlier, just to take the tailwind into account. So, quick look at the approach page. VLS 135, V approach 140. That sounds reasonable. Okay, flaps 2. Speed check, flaps 2. Gear down. <laughs> flaps 3. Speed check, flaps 3. So in the change clock they said they did add some drag to the flaps now. The lift is not corrected yet, but the drag is, they say. I didn't feel too much of it, but a little bit. Might be placebo, but yeah, does seem to be there. Okay, flaps full, checked. Landing checklist. Eka memo, landing no blue. Landing checklist complete. Continue. So, how does the puppy look? Four whites. Three whites. Well, you know what? Disconnect. Fly directors off. Bird on. Set runway track. So let's take it visual from here. What is ground speed mini doing, by the way? The approach is 140. Why do we get 145 commanded? I don't want that. Give me 140, please. So it looks like there is indeed something wrong with ground speed mini that might obviously decrease the approach attitude and therefore lead to the um, flare behavior feeling, let's call it, more interesting. Maybe that is part of the reason why the flare feels so interesting. Yeah, we've got a tailwind right now. Ground speed mini should not increase speed above the V approach like that. So quick word over here, the runway at Santorini is narrower than um, usual runways, so if the approach and flares seem a little bit odd, then um, that is somewhat expected over here. Okay then, we are on the glide. No, certainly not. No. Okay, idle, tiny flare. Okay, come on, into the touchdown zone please. Here we are. Okay. Spoiler, reverse, green, diesel. Seventy knots. Manual brakes. That's what I meant earlier when we did the approach calculation. According to the performance tool we should have used max manual braking but as you can see with uh, medium auto brakes even though we flat in quite a bit i mean i touched down right at the end of the touchdown zone even though we flat in quite a bit um, the plane got down well we were able to break it without many problems so yeah i do have to admit the um only 30 meter width of the runway does take a little bit of a toll even though i believe i did flare at 30 feet and um we still floated a little bit, so I don't know. In, in my opinion, there should be a stronger nose down input. Maybe that is going to be added when the approach pitch is corrected. So when you actually approach at like, um, let's say, four, four degrees pitch or so, maybe that is going to help already. But um, in the meantime, we'll have to see. If I, had I used the four degrees of pitch from the flight crew techniques manual that would certainly have led to um, us climbing away. I think we can say that for sure. So this is like my fifth or sixth landing now with the um, new version and it's still, I don't know, 
I'm sure the logic is correct if Phoenix say that um, the logic is correct now, but something has an influence there that makes the logic um, not behave in the way that we would expect it to behave. Okay, after landing checklist, ray down predictive wind shear, off. After landing checklist complete. Right, let's get that APU running. Okay then, next apron entry, we'll park immediately in front of the terminal. Not sure if just some actually has the correct taxiway markings in here, because they did change the um, ground layout at Santorini Airport. So you know, parking nose into the terminal. Not sure if that is actually featured in the scenery yet, it might not. No, it doesn't look like it. If you look down here, you can see we should be parking nose into the terminal, but I can't find any associated markings here. Not too much of a problem though, then we'll just park ourselves like they used to do in the past over here. And that's gonna be fine as well. Okay. Let's make sure we roll for forward enough that we don't block the taxiway behind us, but this looks good. Okay, cool. Brake set, APU avail, lead on, engines off. Cabin crew, all Dolphin Park. Engines below 20%, beacon can go off, now we're just waiting for the cabin crew to disarm the slides so that we can release the seat belts. Here we go, looks good. Perfect. Parking checklist. Parking brake or trucks. Uh, brake set, engines, off, wing light, off, fuel pumps, off, parking checklist complete. Okay, quick fuel check, looking good. And a quick check of the IRS performance, looking good as well. Okay, perfect. So that's it, guys. Thank you very much for flying. I do hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, do let me know in the comments below. Finally, I'm looking forward to your take on how you can handle the new flare behavior. My opinion still needs a little bit of work. It's probably not the flare logic of the fly-by-wire. It's probably something else having an influence on how the flare logic behaves that causes those floats. But... I'm not 100% sure what that is, I'm sure it's going to be investigated by the Phoenix team, however. And um, just likewise, for the rest of the things we encountered here, like the um, slower speed on the descent, I'm going to submit reports for those to um, the Phoenix team. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. I do hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, then do let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think about it. And let me know how your approaches and landings are going with the uh, latest version of the Phoenix. And in the meantime, leave a like if you did indeed like the video, as it does help with the algorithm. And if you're up for more, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. If you really love my content, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. But in the meantime, looking forward to see you all again on the next one.